It's the Deja Vu Show. You know we have everybody stopping by in here, and it's always a pleasure to have a sister girl who we've seen on screen crafting these roles, bringing these images to life. Miss Tamela Jones, how are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? I am great. <laughs> it's good to see you thank in person. You. <laughs> because we've seen you in all of these different roles and everything. But I want to, I know we're here to talk about your new movie, Every Breath. Every Breath She Takes. She Takes. <laughs> I was singing Every Breath, you take yeah. the whole old song. But um, I want to take it back a little bit before we jump into that movie. Okay. When did you first get the acting bug? I saw that you're from California. Is it a, a, a given? No, I, you know what? I tried everything. I, I knew I wanted to be some sort of entertainer. Mm -hmm. And so I, in the sixth grade, I tried uh, to play the violin, the cello, and then, you know, rap came around uh -huh. for us, you the Lord here. I tried to spit some bars, <laughs> I sucked. Um, <laughs> but then uh, in, in my class, Lark Voorhees from Saved by the Bell, yeah. she, started going to my school and I was like oh my god how did you do it and then she was like I didn't my mom so I didn't really get anything from her uh -huh. and then uh Urkel came uh -huh. and I was like this is insane what school did you attend was it an art school or something it was a fundamental school John Marshall fundamental in Pasadena uh -huh. and it goes through 6th through 12th I went 6th through 12th um so I, I saw them doing it and I wanted to get involved. And then at the age of 14, my family had a catering business. Mm -hmm. um, they got a call to come and replace the old caterers on House Party. Oh, wow. And I met Tisha Campbell and her mom, she was, they were very nice and very kind. Her mom um, gave my mom advice and told her, you need to get her in acting classes. Really? Mm, get her in there, and that's how everything started. That's crazy because this is a full circle moment. <laughs> and you guys have worked together on other projects and everything too. I have never worked with Tisha. But I thought I've seen you in something that she was in. Tisha. Yes. I've no? never worked with Tisha. I've always wanted to. I've always been around someone. I could have sworn I saw y'all in something. To that's crazy. So this is the first? The first time. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. And I like the way that whole story just pulled it together. Girl, look, look, won't he do it? Okay, every time. <laughs> All right, so let's get to Every Breath She Takes. It's a Lifetime movie. Yes. It's a part of their Stop the Violence Against Women mm -hmm. series. How did this role come about for you? Uh, my two producing partners, uh, Sean Dwyer and Elizabeth Cullen, they came to me with this project, and I read it, and it was a, definitely a page turner. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, it resonated with me because during the pandemic I also saw that domestic violence had gone up yes, a lot yes. and when I saw this woman even though she wasn't physically being abused at for the most part mm -hmm. um, she was being mentally and emotionally abused and that was happening too yes the thing about it I loved about Jules was she went through all of these motions but she came out triumph mm -hmm. triumphant and um, I want to inspire any women or men in a situation where they are being abused. Make sure you get you a core group of people. Absolutely. And don't hold it. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because even if you don't plan on doing anything at that moment, the fact that you're talking about it, other people will talk to you, things will stick in the back of your mind, and it'll give you courage to make a move of some sort. Absolutely. You know, so that that is why I wanted to do that movie. Wow. So now you said you're producing partners. I know you are one of the producers on it. Yes. Did you want to just produce it, or were you saying, hey, this is something that I'm going to star in as well? No, I wanted to star in it, and I, and I definitely wanted to, this is my first executive producing job, <laughs> Lifetime, let me have it. And Lifetime opens the door. <laughs> they do. Hey, Lifetime, how y'all doing? I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. But no, that is amazing. Yes. So how was it producing and, and being in the movie as well? Did you have to, like, you know, sit in behind the scenes meetings and everything? Definitely the meetings. Uh -huh. But the, the beauty of the, the executive producing was I got to call upon people who I thought were great to be in the, in the movie. And we all agreed. And... Um, being a part of that selection meant so much to me because I got to work with Jack Hay, yes, Carrie, yes. who I grew up loving. What's um, your name? Mary. Ooh, Mary. <laughs> That's it. <Sandra. laughs> 
I love that. I tried to get, I wanted her to do it. Would she do it? I didn't ask. I was too scared. <laughs> Why? I, I didn't want to, like, it, I know. it was serious. So right, I didn't right, want right. to take her out of it, but <laughs> I really wanted to hear you it. You didn't want to fangirl out in the right. moment. Right. Got you. <laughs> and then um, Brooklyn Sedano, who I did not know. I love her acting. I mm -hmm. did not know this was Donna Summer's daughter. Yeah. Pleasure to work with her. Brian White was amazing. Everybody was great in this movie. But being a part of the selection as an executive producer and having say so on how certain scenes went was very empowering. That is amazing. Yeah. Getting the producing <laughs> on, the starring in this. All right, so tell us about Jules. And, and I've seen the trailer for this and it seems like a psychological thriller, like oh. for real, like, okay, is it real? Did this really happen? Are we gonna get sucked into the zone with this? You're gonna get sucked into the zone. It is a, a very well written and performed, mm -hmm. I must say, uh -oh. everybody was great. <laughs> A uh, psychological thriller. Mm -hmm. You think you're gonna know what's gonna happen next, and you have no idea. Yeah. You have no idea of the twists and turns. And it, is it based on a true story? It is based on a true. It story. is. I was trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that makes it even crazier. Yes. Like, <laughs> what? It's it's um it's one of those that has you thinking, who did it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sh that part. What? No, I never saw that coming. It's one of those. Um, the subject matter is, is something that I think everyone can definitely relate to. You either have been gone, uh, through this or know someone that mm -hmm. has been through mm -hmm. this. So that was very important. But it's, it's um, a lot of dips and turns and you're going to get whiplash trying to keep up, but it's good. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to check for it. It comes out March 25th. Yes. And we'll be able to see it on the screen. Now, you touched on that during the pandemic, we heard about a lot of things happening. How did you survive in the pandemic? Did you get closer to what your craft is, your purpose? I know a lot of folks came out of it with a whole different mindset. I went on a spiritual quest really? with the pandemic. Um, I dove a lot into myself, mm -hmm. things that I didn't think were a problem or an issue with me. I was like, you might need to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, but see, that's good because if you are <laughs> acknowledging some of these things, we, we see some stuff and sometimes we're still like, okay, I'll, I'll deal with that later, but that's good. Well, I did that, okay, I'll deal with that later. And later it compiles and compiles on, and you just forget what, what was this? Because mm -hmm. other things have happened. So I've labeled it a thing that I don't like. I, I said, when you let things go, you allow them to fester. Yeah. And then I looked up the word fester, and it's disgusting. So now anything that I, I procrastinate on or I'm lingering, I'm like, oh, you girl, you don't want the demon fester to show up because when he show up, he's nasty. You want right. to fix that right now. And that's how I've tricked myself into handling things one by one. You can't do everything together. You can just do one by one, but get it done. I love it. Yes. That's, a, that's a good space to be in. Mm -hmm. Okay, talk to us about Hollywood. You have been able to maintain. We've seen your face. We've seen your, your movies and everything. What's the sticking point? What's the key to success? Because we've seen some folks, and then we'll never see them again. You but, have to love it. Yeah. You have to love your craft. You have to love the art of acting. You have to love all of it, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff that comes along with it. Because that rejection, well, we, we didn't get it this yeah. time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're going to hear no a lot. I still hear no a lot. I audition my butt off all the time, mm -hmm. and I hear way more no's than I hear yes, but I don't care because someone's going to say yes. Come on. Someone's going to say yes. Not everybody's going to say no. And whatever improvements I need to make, I will do. But the longevity, I believe, is one, being kind, being mm -hmm. someone that gets along with everyone. Because it's a small circle, ultimately, right? Because y'all are all in the same thing. Who, who's your crew? Who do you roll with? I don't roll with anybody in Hollywood. Really? I do not. I have. <laughs> is I, that a bad thing or a good thing? For me, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, friends in Hollywood. I have, yeah. you know, actors, of friends course, or whatever. And we get together every once in a while, but they're not my Your core. circle. Yes. yes. My, my core group of people are people I've known for over 20-something years. Right. And they check me all the time. But that's what you need, that right? Exactly we all need somebody need. who's going to be like, sis. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they put like sis, you'll be like, all right, all right. They, they keep me in line, you know, on every level, on a spiritual level, on a, a material level, mm -hmm. on a physical, get your, keep, it's time. 
be having too many tacos, too many, honey. Girl, listen, my, my friends be like, you get real comfortable. You yeah. get real comfortable. <laughs> I've had the, the comfortable uh, word come up lately. So, okay, ladies, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But so you hang with your friends, your day ones and your yes. core. But is it necessary to, to get the schmooze on extra in Hollywood? No. I know we do it in regular life. No, you but. have to. You have to go out. You have to network. You mm -hmm. have to see people that you've worked with. You need to keep in touch with them. You go out to dinners so yes. you guys can catch up. You you do that. Yeah. And then everyone goes back to their, their families. That's, this is the age that we are at now. Mm -hmm. But back in the 90s. We all were out in the streets, honey, having a good old time. Oh, spill the tea, spill the tea. No, I, you, I was just telling someone the other day that, you know, when FUBU was popping back in the 90s, mm -hmm. Marvette Brito, who's a, a I New love York Marvette. Yes. <laughs> publicist, got together with them and put this big thing on where they flew every, when I tell you every African-American, black, whatever you want to call us, colored person, because it's so many different titles. I don't right, want to say right, the wrong right. thing. Um, they invited us all. Everyone was there except for Oprah. Star <laughs> Jones, Shaq, Mary J. Blige, Casey. They flew everyone out to New York. Uh -huh. They chartered a 757. They flew us all out to St. Martin. What? We were in St. Martin and Anguilla before Anguilla was Anguilla. Right, right. <laughs> for two weeks. Two everything weeks. Everything paid, everything, and it was popping. I mean, concerts every day, barbecues on the beach. All where was I when all this stuff was happening? Where, where, let me get the 2023 version, the grown and sexy now version, okay? <laughs> it was, it was, and so we all were there. Mm -hmm. Gabrielle Union, Sanaa Lathan. Wow. All of, we were all on that plane. We were all there. Did any roles or anything come out of that? Any projects? Everything with you guys came out of that. Yeah. Regina King was there. Like we all were there and we all talked about things that we were uh, getting ready to do yeah. or what, oh, I heard about this project coming on. And that's, that's basically how we would continue to work with each other. We'd get together and discuss and, mm -hmm. and do all that. But now everybody's older and, you know, everybody's <laughs> tired, you know. So we don't Girl, really meet do me that. at 3 o'clock. I'll see you at 3. You got to be home by 5. Yeah. No, but, no, we still get out and get well, our party do. on. We do. Yes. We do. But not massive like that. <laughs> um, but I, I still, I've, I've worked with Gabrielle on her show, um, L.A.'s Finest. Mm -hmm. I played her sister on there. Uh, just finished working with Sanaa on another movie called, it's an independent movie, and Sanaa kills it, called Young, Wild, and Free. Wow. With Algie Smith starring in it. Yes, what, what is it about? It is, it's a psychological kind of like thriller, and it's about young love, and it's about mental health. Mm. It, it has so many different elements in there, but the storyline is, it takes you on such a great ride. Really? And I play a high school counselor. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we we all we still get together and we talk and sometimes via instagram mm -hmm. you know we'll hit each other up in the dms like what you doing over there <laughs> but you know it's all love that's beautiful yeah. that's beautiful especially in the industry and in the times that we are in now it's just it seems like it's a weird world that we're in, but the fact that you guys are still connecting and, and staying close and things, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, so we know that we have every breath she takes. <laughs> What's next for you for the rest of this, this year? What is it looking like? Well, I'm, I'm back recurring on 911 Lone Star. Mm -hmm. I love playing Detective Washington. And thank you, Tim Manier, if you're seeing this, for bringing me back. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> um, and Angela Bassett, you too. She, you know, she's executive producing yes. on, on both. 911 show, so um, thank well, you. I didn't to know her. she was on both, producing yeah, on both. both. Wow. She's got both. Okay. Um, so thank you. That's why she's um, the queen. She is. Yes. I also have a movie called Ordinary Angels. I don't want to talk too much about it. Okay. Because I want to come back and talk about it. There you go. I want to come back and talk about it, but that, that'll be out um, the fall. The okay. Fall, so. so you've been busy. I have a and, little bit. <laughs> and what does it look like for chill? What's relaxed time for you? I like to work as much as I can so that when I when the town shuts down. When does it shut down? So I would say like all the shows are still going and like around March, April, May, later part of May. Really? Mid June. Everybody, Is that like the season shift or something? That's for the end of the summertime break for everyone wow. because then the fall shows oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. get ready to start up again. So you got like a month and a half off mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. things start getting back. And then the other shutdown is Christmas, New Year's. Yeah. So if I can 
sneak a trip in those two times of the year, I will. <laughs> and I love anywhere tropical. I love not wearing any makeup, not wearing any clothes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I hate live your life, sis. Hey, do what you do. Bikini top and, and, and cut off jean Come shorts and flip flops. Come on now. And I'm nasty too, you guys. <laughs> You're lucky if I brush my teeth every day oh while I'm <laughs> Because Let I'm on my God. <laughs> I love oh, it. Baby. I love it. And what's what's the love life like for you? Oh, I'm single. I, you know, that's so funny. I, I was trying to date mm -hmm. after the pandemic and I just had to put everything on pause because I kept running into something. And, and at first you want to say, is it me? Do I need to make some adjustments because you meet who you are? Mm -hmm. But this is not the case. I feel that being stuck in the house has really mentally screwed with some people's minds. Either you got on your grind and you handled things for yourself, right. you spiritually grounded yourself, or you, you tackled some personal things that you wanted to do, whether it's I need to lose weight or I need to be better being active or whatever. Mm -hmm. You did that or you took the pandemic and said, woe is me. And you carried that all the way through and you haven't done anything, but you're attracted to the ones who have done the work so you come over there and you oh my god yes and then that person is mad because you are excelling and, and they're, they're not growing up. and it's their decision not to grow so once I kept running into that and that was twice that they kept <laughs> running into that that was enough for me to say you know what let's let me just let's focus chill. on me yeah I love love I love men I think you guys are amazing but um I need you to be whole and maybe I needed to do some more work on me too so in the meantime that's what I'm doing okay. <laughs> working on me some more <laughs> and also focusing more on on my career and trying to make important moves for me that will help me in in the future absolutely I think right now is the time for the grind season you know what I mean yeah. Com coming again coming out of the pandemic like you said either you were getting your hustle on I just think opportunities are there but I think we we will hit a, a wall eventually but I think with all the technology, mm -hmm. all the different stuff, shoot, you can still get on and slide in somebody's DMs and, and jump on these apps <laughs> while you're still grinding. But I'm saying, I think the opportunities are here right, right now. So just to get that pace going, you know what and I mean? And I don't want to sound like I'm closed off to love. No, I'm no, no, open. I get you. I'm open to it. If, if just it's don't bring that drama. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring don't that crazy. Do that. Don't do it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to talk to you. This is good. Yes. And again, like, I told you, I, I, I've seen you in all these different movies, and it's just like, wow, to see you here in front and center in, in the face. <laughs> and with this new project is amazing. So thank Aww, you for stopping by. Thank you so much. Every Breath She Takes. Yes. Tamala will be playing Jules. Yes. She's executive producing. And it'll be out March 25th, correct? Yes, correct. On Lifetime. <laughs> all right, any, any closing remarks to anybody? I just love everybody. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in and watching everything that I've done up until this point. I really hope you enjoy every breath she takes. Wait, one more thing. Is there a favorite role? I know people don't like to pick their favorite <laughs> songs. No, they're all like my babies. Is there a favorite role that you had? Honestly... I don't have a favorite role because all of them have been my favorite. When I get into You're saying the same thing that they're all saying. I swear. <laughs> because I love acting. Yeah, yeah. So when I get a role and I've auditioned for it and I've won it or whatever, if I take it, it's been offered. I, I took it because it hit something in me. Gotcha. And then once I get on there and we start doing the do, then I'm like, what I'm talking about so I get excited about every role and every role to me has been fun um, I'll say my favorite role if, if I have to have a favorite would have been my first movie because it was the first experience mm -hmm. and I I worked with comedy legends that just finished in living color mm -hmm. so booty call because I was getting my feet wet. I guess you can say that's my favorite. All right, cool. <laughs> I don't want to make a pick. All right, fine. And one more thing. I keep asking one more thing. We're wrapping up. But I keep thinking about the questions. Who were your legends that you looked at when you were, you know, saying that you wanted to act, that the ones were like, oh, my gosh, I love the way she did this. I want to be like that on the screen. Debbie Allen. Yes. At uh, the opening of Fame, I would do it in the backyard. And right here is where you start paying. So in sweat. <laughs> Honey, that was it. Yes. Um, uh, Debbie Allen, um, 
I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Dorothy Dandridge, yes. Diane Carroll. Uh, they Eartha were so Kitt. elegant. Like they, they moved with such. I don't know, right? When they, you see them, just, the way they talked, yes. and spoke, and Diane Carroll. That was the first classy black woman that right. I saw sneaking watching Dynasty when I was little. You bitch. I mean, that was the first time I heard it. I was like, oh my god. I love Diane Carroll. I, I loved her in Claudine. Mm-hmm. I um, th- there's so many great actors and Betty Davis is another one of my favorites. Absolutely. The crazy that this woman plays. That's actually what I want to do next. I want to play some sort of crazy villain Uh-oh. with this little sweet face. You would never think I would do that. <laughs> but I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that's it. Every breath she takes will be on Lifetime March 25th. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having that's me. <laughs>